So, so something came up for me as you were talking about her and you were unpacking this idea of belief, like religious structure. So I'm, I think I have a very unique experience. I think there's other people like me, and I think you might be in the same vein in my religious background. I really was attuned to focusing on what was the right belief. But actually, as you were talking, I realized I think most people though are playing defense. Mm. They're more focused on not having the wrong belief than they are about adopting the right belief. In other mm. words, they're trying to not be in trouble by whatever. And so they don't want to think the wrong thing. It's not about so much thinking the right thing or like, I'm attuning to this. And I think that girl is a great example of that. The person that worked with you yesterday, or you worked with yesterday, checking you out at the counter. She was more fearful of having the wrong end of the stick. She didn't want to do something wrong. She was playing defense, protecting, protecting herself, right? Covering her butt on, I don't want to do the wrong thing. That was what eroded self-trust. It wasn't like, I really think this is the right belief to believe, to check in with customers, to see if they want their stuff wrapped. It was, it was a defensive move on her side. And I think that's probably how I think a lot of people experience it, mm-hmm. whatever belief system they're part of. I don't think, it's been my experience that most people don't really believe whatever narrative they have to follow. They're just kind of like, I don't want to be in trouble. Mm-hmm. I don't want to get kicked out of the yeah. tribe or be ostracized or humiliated or shamed into something. Yeah. And so I'll behave. I'll pretend like I completely buy this narrative. I'll pretend like I don't see what's on the TV screen because I don't want to be in trouble. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a very defensive thing. I agree. Uh, Or have a, you know, maybe she's had customers that were really salty before. Yeah. And she didn't want to do that. I, I, or have that experience again, but so I didn't mean to take us down a crazy road. No, no, no. <laughs> just, I, this yeah. is all coming up for me in real time as we talk. Yeah. And and I think that's right. I think most people are playing defense. The challenge with that is trust gets created with a couple different things. One of them is, as I mentioned, following through. When I say I'm going to do something, I do it. I don't hesitate. I say, this is the thing I'm going to do. That means that I have to be willing to make commitments. That means that I have to pull the trigger on saying I'm going to do something. If I'm always hedging and looking to everybody else to make help me make my decisions, how often am I going to make commitments that I have to now follow through with? So the first thing is to be willing to make a commitment, to follow a duty, an honor. That was one of the definitions of trust, which was fulfilling your commitments and having a sense of loyalty. So when you build self-trust, the loyalty is to the self. You have a sense of loyalty to yourself, which is if you mess up and somebody comes at you because you messed up enough for them to notice, you're going to be loyal to yourself enough to stand up for yourself and say, I have a right to make mistakes. I've noticed that there are, it's not just personality types. I mean, if we want want to bring in Enneagram, I think there are some Enneagram types that have some challenge with this. And I do think that there might be some Myers Briggs types that have some challenge with this too. Perfectionism, I've noticed, almost almost every single personality type I have personally profiled has, to some extent, claimed to have perfectionism. It's just what they're a perfectionist around is completely different. A lot of them call themselves overthinkers too. I think it surprises people that how many how often you'll profile it like an ESFP type that says I'm a I'm a overthinker. Because the assumption is like only INTJs are overthinkers, right? INTJs will not claim to be overthinkers necessarily. They're like, no, I'm doing just the right amount of thinking. <laughs> I'm so, not doing enough. I'm, I'm an underthinker. I'm underthinker. Oh God, it's all going to go to crap. <laughs> I've only spent 12 hours today thinking. That's total underthinker. But most people claim some form of perfectionism. I'm a perfectionist. What they're a perfectionist in changes from person to person. The I ch- just care too much. I just care too much. <laughs> The challenge with perfectionism is that you don't give yourself quarter when you aren't perfect. You don't, you don't, you're not kind to yourself. You beat yourself up. You go, it wasn't okay that I made this mistake, which is why I'm going to spend so much time and effort ensuring I don't make any mistakes. And this is something that I think massively erodes self-trust because it is a symbol of disloyalty to the self. And when we, because if we were loyal, we'd hang with ourselves through thick and thin. When I make a commitment in a marriage, I've committed to you, you mess up. I'm not like, that's it. It's over. (laughs) I'm like, no, I'm 
committed to you through thick and thin, proverbially, for proverbially. I have said that even when you make a mistake, I'm going to I'm going to hang. And even if the mistakes are really huge and I'm like really salty about them, I'm like, you shouldn't have made that mistake. That was a big one. It hurt me a lot. I'm going to go lick my wounds now. I'm still hanging because that's my commitment to you. Now, is are there things you could do to me that would break the commitment? Well, I would experience them as you had broken the commitment. And so I wasn't the first person to, to do that. So there are some there are some things that would be deal breakers. But they're really, 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 really big ones. And one of the reasons why I married you is because I'm pretty sure you're not going to do any of those. So loyalty means that I hang with you even if you show up imperfect. And if we have self-loyalty, we're going to hang with ourselves even if we show up imperfect. And when we mess up, when we have mistakes, when we are imperfect, and we watch ourselves be kind and gentle with ourselves doesn't mean that we're necessarily sanctioning it doesn't mean that we say yeah I totally should have done that that was that terrible thing I did was that was what I had to do and it was it was right that I did it now we go no I legitimately own that I messed up and I messed up so I'm gonna play cleanup if I hurt people I'm gonna go take care of that I'm going to change course I'll figure out I'll take all the lessons I can from the experience do my best to take the right lessons. And I keep, you know, I said, fail again, fail be- better. But that's a Samuel Beckett quote. Ever tried, ever failed. No matter, try again. Fail again, fail better. So I'm going to, I'm going to allow myself to fail better in the future. And when you watch yourself do that with yourself, your level of self-trust skyrockets. Because now you know that if your judgment was poor in a moment, it's not, it's not that you're trusting your judgment will always be right. That's not what self-trust is. It's not saying, I'm always going to have the right end of it. It's if I got it wrong, it's going to be okay. It's not the end of the world. I'm going to trust that I can do the right thing. And if I didn't, I can get through it and get to the other side. So perfectionism is one of the biggest killers of self-trust. And I think when we give ourselves the gift of self-compassion, now our self-trust starts to go up.